for the pin and the release from guidance on the right side of the airplane. And uh, we'll see you guys next time through. So I, as I was saying, I'm not entirely sure if um, on the 777 the startup is automated and you are supposed to uh, set the fuel control switches to run and then turn the starter on because the process is automatic, completely automatic or if it's like on the 767 in which you first start uh, turn the starters on and then you inject the fuel I'm not entirely sure what I'm sure about though is you noticed we didn't need to turn the packs off and that's because uh, in this aircraft it's all automatically done the packs are automatically turned off to allow for sufficient air for the starting of the engine so in fact let's you see th the right engine now is powering is supplying with air is supplying everything still. the APU is not supplying any air at all so let's go ahead and start the left engine left engine now you see oh that's interesting you see the APU is now supplying air to the left engine starter let's go back to engine 27 there So as you see the APU is providing air to start the left engine and you see all the air is being used to start the engine. These isolation switches are smart in that they close automatically um, now the engine is on, the APU bleed valve is closed and any moment now the engine bleed valve is going to be open, this one here and powering, supplying the system with air. Now the duct pressure is increasing again I don't know if this is supposed to take some time until the engine stabilizes. Left and right packs are off. So now, now that both engines are running, we can turn the uh, APU off, turn the taxi light on. the left and right packs are on now so there you see now it's the engines powering left engine is supplying air to the left pack, right engine to the right pack and the center isolation switch is closed isolating both systems So let's do a flight control check. Ailer on full left. Where's the jog not moving? Up, uh, I guess that might be a setting here on the menu. PMTG options simulation. There it is.
So aileron full left, aileron full right, neutral, elevator full down, elevator full up, neutral, rudder full left, rudder full right, neutral, flight controls checked and free. Let's go to the outside view and see how very nice. You see one Aileron, left aileron, you see the spoilers racing on the left wing. And if you use the right aileron, you see the left aileron going down the flat run over there. So now, what we're doing now is let's set the flaps for takeoff. This you would normally use do during taxi out on the taxiway but I want you to here to show flaps one flaps five I want you to see how they actually deploy you can even hear the flaps motor Brakes. Speed brakes are on. It's the level of detail is amazing. You can see the actuators. Let's move back into the cockpit and do the after start checklist. is not needed. Recall TCAS is off. Recall checked. Flight controls are checked. Ground equipment is clear. Normal. B for takeoff. Flaps 5. Automatically detected. And after takeoff. So we'll leave it at that. And now we can release the brakes. And apply some forward pressure. You see the aircraft starting to roll. Let's chase that run taxiway center line. Straight line, 20 knots is fast enough speed. Let's nail the nose wheel on the taxi line. It looks so slow from up here. So let's assume that this airport is equipped with a ground radar and turn the TCAS system, the TARA, on all the way on. Let's also turn the weather radar on.
pilot is going to be the, the terrain, the map of the ground for the pilot flying, and the weather radar for the pilot not flying. There it is. So we are approaching the runway. Let's assume that uh, the airport is deserted. We are the only ones taking off, or making use of the runway. We've been cleared for departure. So we'll turn the strobe lights on, landing lights on, runway turn off lights on. One of the passengers that we are about to take off. Let's track that center line again. Let's arm LNAV and VNAV. One last check on the overhead panel. Everything is looking nice. Use speed. I'm not using rudder pedals today, so it's a bit difficult to modulate the brake input using the um, one button. I'm using the trigger button on my Sidetake X52, so it's not easy to modulate the braking effort. So we've been cleared onto the runway, cleared for takeoff. Landing lights are on, the strobes are on. Approaching three zero. Oh, that was a bit late. So, and to do the turn, you want to do that five or so knots. Shoot the runway center line because this aircraft is so long. If I had two throttles, I would be using the outer engine to help me do this turn. On runway three zero. Well, thank you. And the key here is to use the least possible amount of runway. There we are on the runway. I'm going to set the parking brakes again. Do one last check. Parking brake cassette, seat belts on, auto brake, RTO, doors, manual. Um, why don't the doors go to... to... closed? Ah, there it is, armed. Oh, that was actually a screw up of mine. There it is. Now the doors are armed. In case of a evacuation, the slides would deploy, and the message is on. Doors auto. Parking brake is set. Seat belts on. Auto brake RTO. And there we are on the runway, ready for takeoff. So for taking off, I will be using the auto thrust and um, on the real aircraft you would be using the takeoff goron switches here but on this 
PC aircraft, I'm using the shortcut, the knob, the PMDG thoughtfully placed here so we didn't have to mess around with the view. So, one last recall, clear, everything is ready now. So, release the parking brakes, spool the engines up a little, till 55% and 1, stabilized, take off go around, engine thrust is set, Apply a slight forward pressure on the joke, and now all you want to do is track the runway set to line. Thrust hold the FMA. Keep the runway set to line. V1. One, release the hand. Rotate. Rotate. Start rotating. Lift off. Positive rate, gear up. Fly the flight director. Now we lower the nose for acceleration. See the speed bug has been updated. Flaps 5, so setting flaps 1. And once we pass the flaps 1 maneuvering speed, the little green bug on the speed tape, now we select flaps up, flaps up. Let's trim. And there it is. That's up. I will update the Turn the autopilot on. So shake it's difficult to move the knobs. 1500 feet. He actually was so slow setting that altitude that the aircraft started leveling off at 6000. So now the autopilot is in command. I will and hide this. We passed 6,000 feet, so we'll set this altimeter to standard. Oops. There it is, standard altimeter. Now let's go ahead and climb to. level. You see the mouse is moving well. There it is. So after takeoff checklist landing gear is up, flaps are up, after takeoff checklist is completed. Now that we are passing and we're climbing so high, so fast, 3000 feet per minute. 10,000 feet, so let's turn the landing guards runway turn off light and the taxi light off. You only want to have beacon, laugh and stroke. You can also turn the seat belts to auto. So you see now we are tracking the radial 304 inbound Tango Fox November. 
there it is. Let's have an out view. Let's see what the aircraft is doing. From outside. Where's Tenerife? Looks so much better on X-Plane. If you have a look on my channel, I recorded a couple of videos using X-Plane 10 around Tenerife and using an HD and photo real scenery looks so much better than this. It's really, really amazing. The only reason I'm using FSX is this aircraft really. Other than that I will be using x all the time. So we are coming into Tango Fox November. New war. Let's see how Also, you see, we passed flight level 150 and the speed restriction washed out. So now we are climbing at, at trying to achieve 320 speed, the optimal climb speed. And there the aircraft is tracking the outbound radial 080 very nicely. There you see the radio completely aligned. Very nice. Hit it, the wrong button. So shaky. Out a bit on the navigation display. Here you see the island of Gran Canaria. We are flying right spot on the radial 080. Very nice. So you see how how precise LNAV mode is. Let's also change the altimeter setting here.
So, and that's basically it. No, there's nothing much to do, just wait to get to cruise level. See, we have backwind. See the progress page. So we'll be arriving at 1621 now and we'll be arriving at 1757, so in one hour and a half. And uh, you see we'll be arriving with 13 tons of fuel, more than enough. Let's update the cruise optimum level is 360. Well, why not? Let's have a look at the systems and everything is doing. The left and right engine are powering the left and right main buses. Hydraulics. All hydraulic systems, all three hydraulic systems working. The fuel panel. You see there's no fuel in the center. Tanks. So it's a tank to engine configuration, 23 tons. The fuel temperature right now is 16 degrees. Air systems, normal. Let's hope all doors are closed. The and the gear system, so good. Flight control. Stabilizers here is controlled by the autopilot right now. So it's all good. I think it's actually standard practice to turn the multi function display off. So that's what we'll do. Go to NAFRAD, check uh, Lima, Sulu, Romeo. This is actually a neat. Um, the pre select menu where you can line select the identifier of a given station and so to speak, save it here and have it readily available. So now if I want to input Lima to Romeo, I don't have to type it all. I just line select it here, bring it down into the scratch pad, and now I can input it. Into the there you see the green needle updating here. So the inbound course to Lima Sul Romeo will be zero eight one. See it's strong. I'm not sure which one it is. It's Mary They're heading back to the real heading. Something I forgot. It's good practice on long legs to keep the heading selector and heading back matched with the aircraft's heading. Just in case. Let's say, for example, ATC gave you vectors, say, uh, turn 10 degrees to the left or something like that. Then you would hit heading select, and you wouldn't have to think which way you have to move it back. 
you know if you want to turn left you move to the back left that is counterclockwise or going to the right you move counter uh, clockwise so we arrived at our cruise altitude 360 see the engines are in cruise mode it's pulled down a little let's see the fuel consumption 3.4 so we can say it's 7 tons of fuel per engine per hour. No, uh, 3.4 per engine, 7 tons of fuel per hour. I think that 747 takes 10 tons an hour in total. It's 4 engines, each engine taking approximately 2.5. So you see how the 777 is more fuel efficient than the 747 and the 777 300 extended range I, I guess it's well it's more or less the same 3.4 the engines are the General Electric the biggest turbojet engines there are turbofan the biggest available in the market and they take 3.5 tons of fuel per hour so we could say this aircraft is 30% more fuel efficient than the 747, if you will. Which is a lot of fuel efficiency improvement. So, you see we left Laris already. I'm going to go to the fixed page. So there we are, 60 miles from Lanzarote VOR. Let's see if we see Lanzarote. Yeah, there it is. Outside. This is the island of Lanzarote. And over here, that's Fuenteventura. Very nice beaches in Fuenteventura. It's a very flat island. Long, white sand beaches. And Lanzarote is completely different. It's incredible that these two islands are so close together because the, this island is it looks like Mars. It has a beautiful natural reserve, a natural park of mountains that look like Mars, as if you were on Mars. In fact, I believe they, they filmed some movies in there because it's really amazing. On the other hand, Fuerteventura is long and flat. It's completely flat. Why is it the camera shaking around so so much? I think that's an exaggerated effect. So let's see if the VOR is being tracked. Yeah, here. Lima Sulu Romeo, 081. And you see the radio. The aircraft is doing a good job of tracking this radio. And in fact on the NAFRAD page we can Select this course here and the outbound course for Lima Sur Romeo Sur 6. There it is. So we will leave Lima Sulu Romeo on the Sur 6 outbound radio. There. So I think I will log off now. I hope you join me in the second part of this flight, tutorial flight, in which I will install the approach into the system. Recall I didn't, remember I didn't uh, set the approach. I left it at Becher. And, um, 
and then I will I will fly the VOR SIR2 approach to run with SIR2 VOR approach, very fun to fly VORs on the 777 and hopefully it will be a good landing Let's see what happens so see you then on the second part and uh, bye bye